we just like to welcome and thank everyone for joining us today at Rua International Ministries. I'm Pastor Sean Weisel, and we just are grateful that you are able to connect with us this day. We believe we have an inspired word from God for you. We believe it will be able to transform and renew your mind. And if you'd like to join us, you can even log in to www. Rua International Ministries.com. And we also have, you could subscribe with us on YouTube as well. But we believe the Word of God is transforming. We believe it's able to save you, to equip you for this time, because today is the day of salvation. And we hope you're inspired, because just as Proverbs 25, 25 says, as cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. God bless you and enjoy the message. Hallelujah, praise God, hallelujah. Welcome everyone this morning. And uh, we pray that you are blessed this morning, amen. Amen. I just have a, a simple word, you know, it's not going it, to it, it, like a long word and stuff, but it's a word I, I just want to read so that we understand where we're coming from. But if you are going to write or if you are going to um, uh, maybe, wow, if you're going to, if you want to know what this message is all about, you know, it's just a word from the Lord that, you know, de deception can come in, in big on small forms. And we have to be, as a children of God, when God gives us a word, we have to take that seriously. We, you know, when God gives you a word, whether it's a word to give to somebody, whether it's a word for you, take heed of that word and listen to God's command, amen. amen. Don't take God's command as something that is lightly because your life is in that word. Your life is standing because of that word. If you mess it up, you might be walking, but a dead person walking, you know, because you've drifted away from God because of the word that you heard from God, but you decided or you were deceived in a, in a way that, you know, you didn't hack into the word of God or you, you didn't pay attention. You took it lightly, you know, and um, I, it, it should be a teaching to you and me today that, you know, whatever God says, you better hold to that because I'm telling you, the word of God comes for, for you to receive life. But if you are being rebellious or you go out of God's way, the word of God also comes and brings and bring judgment. Amen. 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 So I, I'm just going to read here. And now I'm going to talk a little bit about this, this young prophet that was coming from Judah. You know, he was sent from Judah by God to take a word of God to Bethel. You know, Bethel, the king had gone astray. The king had gone astray because he took the house of God and turned it into a house of Baal. Mm. The place that was anointed by God and inspired by the Holy Spirit, where they were good, where all the children of Israel would go and 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 you know and and worship. But they the king decided to build the two calves there you know, and worship them. So let's open in, that is, um, let's open First Kings chapter 13. I'm going to read it in this one because it's, it's a study one. So it says, yeah. I'm gonna end this. Sorry. It says, and behold, they came a man uh, this one, and behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel, and 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 Jer Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Jeroboam was the king of Bethel. Amen. So they say that he and he he cried out. He cried out against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, O altar, thy says the Lord, behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priest of the high, high places that burnt incense 
upon thee and men of men of bones shall be bent upon thee and i'm just reading the story i want us to see where we are going amen and he gave a sign the same day saying this is the sign which the lord had spoken behold the altar shall be rent in the ashes that upon it shall be poured out and it came to pass when king jeroboam heard the saying of the men of god which had cried against the altar in bethel that he put he put forth his hand from the altar saying lay hold on the on him and his hand which he put forth against him dried up so that he could not put put uh, he could not pull it in against to him the altar also was rent and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the men of god had given by the word of of the lord and the king answered and said unto the men of god entreat now the face of the lord thy god and pray for me that my hand may be restored may be restored me again and the man of god besought the lord and the king's hand was restored him again and became as it was before okay let's look at this the house of god was turned into a place where everybody was worshiping idols and who who made that to happen that way it was the king you you understand the king is the one that decided to worship other gods you know and 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 reject the lord but worship other gods and then god sent someone from a different country sent someone from a different uh city we say and it, it's a different country because different you know so he sent someone and said go to go to bethel you know and bring forth the word and when the man of god brought forth the word the king heard that word because he was in the process of doing his incense burning incense burning incense it's not of god i don't care who says what because there's so many christians burn incense in their homes and some of these oil that they use them they are not good for you you know there's something about it the bible wouldn't be saying that if there was nothing wrong with it so he was busy burning incense because incense was used to burn for idols idol worshipers always use incense you know to burn and appease their spirits so he was in the he, he was in the process he was right there right-handed he was just doing it and the man of god when he was doing about to do that the man of god came forth and spoke the word from god and he came from another country to bring forth the word he came all the way from judah to bring the word in bethel to to the king and the king said get hold of him and he was busy trying to point and his hand shriveled up the very hand that was pointing to the man of god something happened to it he became disabled the bible says that hand it dried up it dried up so that he could not pull it in against to 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 him like he couldn't point and and he couldn't point the man of god it shriveled that very hand amen and then he cried out to the man of god says oh you pray to your god that my hand be straightened back you know he cried out and he cried out to the lord and the lord restored his hand and the king said unto the man of god come home you know this seven says and the king said unto the man of god come home with me and refresh thyself and i will give thee a reward mm -hmm. and the man of god said unto the 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 king if thou will give me half half thine house 
I will not go into in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so was it charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that you, you comest. Okay. So the, the, the young man, the prophet said, when the king was inviting him in his home, he refused and said, no, not even, not if, even if you want to give me half of your home or the, your whole home, whatever, even if whatever you're trying to give me, that's a spirit of seduction, you know, you want to seduce him and lure him in to be one of them, you know. So the king says, come on, you know. I want you come on and refresh yourself. You you know you've been working. You swear you've been you came all the way. You need to refresh yourself. You need to you know take a shower, take come and take a bath. And after taking a bath, you know just refresh yourself. Maybe give him cologne or something. Spray yourself and smell good and not looking all dusty and all sweaty. You know the Lord said. He had, he said, even if you give me the house and all that, I am not going to come to your house. He rejected. He refused to be part of what the king was doing. Amen. He said that he received a command from God. He said he received a command from God that he should not eat the bread in that country no what drink water in that country he, he says that and so he said to him no turn again by the same way you came you the the same road that you used don't use the same road coming back use the other road going back to judah he wasn't supposed to use the same road he was supposed to use a different road look at this look at this that the king was trying to seduce him and coming so that he can be one with them. He rejected it. And he told the king what the Lord told him. Sometimes it's not good that you say what the Lord. It's good to give the word and you finish and you leave. You don't tell if the Lord told you not to eat. The places where I go and send and give the word. I don't tell them the Lord said don't touch the food. Because there's something wrong with it. I don't tell you that. I do. I just come to your home and do the work of the Lord, but I won't touch your food. You know? Why? Because that you don't understand. You know, you will be set up for something that's for your downfall. Because if he tried and he failed, that means something is coming. The devil is making sure that something more is coming. You know? So it was the king. She, he rejected it and he left. Amen. But he told the king that the Lord commanded him not to eat the food, not to touch, drink the water, and he mustn't use the same direction that he came, he came from. Amen. But look at here. Now, 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 um, so, uh, so the, the, the word says that, so he went another way. Uh, that's verse 10. And, and, and he returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. Verse 11. Now they dwelt an old prophet in Bethel. And his sons came and behold him. All the works of the men of God had done that day. They say that they told the, the, <laughs> the sons of the old prophet in Bethel. That was a prophet in Bethel. Okay. Those were his sons. They had. There was no internet. There was no Facebook. There was not all these things that we have today. Amen. But they say that the, the news go fast, guys. The news go fast. <laughs> they, they say that, you know, the, 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 the sons of the old, the, the Bible says there was the sons of the old prophet. <laughs> now dwelleth an old prophet, verse 11, in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the men of God had done that day in Bethel, the words which he had spoken unto the king. Them they told also to, his, to their father, and their father said unto them, 
what way went he? For his sons had seen what way the men of God went, which came from Judah. You see that he was marked. You, you understand what I'm saying? This, the sons were sent. It's like the sons were there. They saw what God has done. Great miracles. I'm telling you, he came in and brought forth the powerful word of God to, you know, to, uh, to tell, you know, the king, put your house in order, you know, and, and everything. To, he says, because God was bringing judgment. God was bringing judgment to Bethel because they worshipped idols. They stopped worshipping the true living God and they were worshipping idols. And the Lord said, uh-uh, you know what? Because he had to start from the top. You know, you don't start from the, the children. You start from the top. He started with the king. Because the king was involved. So if the king is involved, that means everybody in the nation is standing with it. But God had to uproot from the, from the, from the top coming down. He started with the king first. That's why he went to the king's house. That this, the very thing that the king was doing was not right before the, before the Lord. That it was an abomination to worship idols. It is an abomination even today. It is an abomination to worship idols. It is an abomination to worship idols. So what is it that the Lord is saying here? The old man, when he had great miracles that were done through the young prophet, he sent, he asked the sons, where did, which direction? Because he didn't come the same direction. He used the, the different direction to go back home as he was commanded by the Lord. And then what happened? He was resting under the tree. The old man says, Where did, which direction did he go? And he said unto his sons, Sell me the ass. So that's the donkey. So they saggled him the ass, the donkey. He rode thereon. And he went after the man of God. And he found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that cometh from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, come, come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread, nor drink neither water with thee in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, thou shalt eat, thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink water th there, nor turn again to, to go by the way that thou comest. He said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. You see that? He said, I am a prophet too. The young man said to him, <laughs> I will not go with you to your house. I will not turn back to Bethel because he was already out, you know? So he said, I will not turn back to Bethel with you because there is a word that was commanded to me by the Lord. I shouldn't go, I shouldn't go back the same way. I mean, I'm going the direction where I'm going back. I'm going back to, jo to, to Judah. But he was listening. The old man was listening. The old man was listening <laughs> to everything he was saying. And then what does he say to this young man? He said unto the young man, I am a prophet also. I am a prophet also. And and, and the, the prophet, the old prophet say, 
And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with, with thee in thy house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. You see, he said the angel of the Lord came to him and told him, go to the young man, the young prophet, and, and tell him to come to your house and, and so that he may what? He may refresh himself. And then eat the very thing that the king wanted him to do, that he rejected. But now, because a man came to him and said, I'm a man of God also. Haven't you heard that saying before? There are so many of them that will come to you and say, I'm a, I'm a man of God also. Or I'm a woman of God also. I hear from God also. Really, do you? Do you? What, what does the word say? <laughs> These so-called men of God lied to this man. He lied to him on his face like this straight up. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drank water, my God. And it came to pass as they sat at the table that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back and, and he cried out. He cried unto the man of God that he came from, that came from Judah saying, Thy says the Lord, for, for, as, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord and, and has not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but comest back and has eaten bread and drank water in, in the place of which the Lord did, did say to thee, eat, eat no bread and drink no water, thy, thy carcass shall not come unto the sculpture unto the sculpture of the of thy fathers and it came to pass after he had given he had eaten and after he had drunk that he he settled for for him he settled for him the 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 ass to to wait for the prophet whom he had brought back and then he was gone. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him. And his carcass was cast in, in the way and the ass stood by, by it. And the lion also stood by the, by the carcass. Let me say this. Wow, this is messed up. The man, it's, it's, it's a very bad thing, guys, you know. The very man that came and deceived you is the very man that God gives the word for your death. Guys, this is serious. This is serious. This is not, this is not good. This is not good. Amen. This is not good. This is not good. You come, you deceive me and say the Lord spoke to you when God didn't speak to you. You seduce me and manipulate me and bring me to your home. <laughs> I sit and eat with you and, 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 and in the midst of eating, you get a word from God concerning me that I'm going to die. Wow. Wow. I'm telling you, the devil is a liar. And the truth is not in him. 
The devil is a liar and the truth is not in him. I'll say this. You look at it this way. <laughs> when God speaks the word to you, pay attention. Pay attention. I remember, I will share this. I was sent to speak the word of God to this big church, you know, and I went there. They avoided to see, for me to see the men of God. They avoided for a while, but God said that don't give up. Go give, go give him this word, him and his wife. And I went there early in the morning before the service started. I went there very early to the office before they started. I said, I, I knocked, I said, they said, okay, let me see them before they preached. And I was, I was taken in and I saw the man of God. I said, I have a word for you from the Lord. I've had this word, I, I can't even sleep because the Lord said that I must come and bring the word. I brought forth the word of God. He's like, whoa. This word is not me. I know that you're not the only person that the Lord has sent concerning this thing. And this thing is serious. I said, yes. That, that says the Lord put your house in order. He says, but it's not me. It's my wife and the husband. It's not me. It's my, they kept on pointing each other. But I said, the Lord said, put your house in order. And the Lord told me. I didn't even share with them. The, the Lord told me, after you give the word, that's it. Because I, I had to wait for the people that I was with. You don't come back here. After giving the word, I went and sat down in the church. And the, the, you know, the pastor he came to me and says, we want you to be one of the leadership in the elder in the leadership in the church. I said, no, no, the Lord said, no, he says, oh, you can be leadership in the church. I said, the Lord said, no, you know, the thing is that you give the word of God that the Lord has sent you, but it's not for you to sit and eat with them. You can't sit and eat with them. He was supposed to give the word and leave. He wasn't supposed to give the word and sit and eat. Because I'm telling you, the devil is cunning. The devil is cunning. You know, you gave a very powerful word and that man wanted, he was pointing fingers at you to kill you. The king wanted him to be killed and he was pointing fingers, but the Lord made his hand that was pointing to be crooked and, and, and shriveled up and, and dried up. <laughs> God is not playing. Amen. God is not playing. What do I want to say today? Because it's few things I want to share about, you know, being when God sends you with the word that you don't take it lightly, that you, you know, you don't, you know, you don't sit there and start eating and sit there and start at being friends and all that. No, don't contaminate yourself. You don't contaminate yourself, you know. So what, what am I saying here? This young man was commanded not to eat, not to do anything. That was a command. The Bible says he was commanded to not to eat, not drink, not to go the same direction. That means don't stop anyway. After you've done, come straight to, Ju uh, to Judah. Don't, don't stop anyway. But he decided to. He decided to. You know, and you see, he wasn't supposed to stop and go. But you already came out. So why are you going back? You're already out. You're using the different direction. You're already out. People are following you to come back and eat and, 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 and refresh us. No, you're already out. You're gone. What? Why go back? 
and be tangled again with sin like them. There, there's no need for that. So what am I saying here? I'm saying that number one, when we look at um, when we look at um, you know the the word that says in in First Samuel fifteen twenty two let twenty three. Let's go there. Look at what the verse twenty two says. What does verse twenty two says here? Verse twenty two says that, and Samuel said. And Samuel said, Had the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices and and as I mean Samuel was talking to Samuel was talking to Saul, you know, because Saul took it he took it in, in his place to what to sacrifice when he wasn't supposed to he was supposed to wait for Samuel to do the sacrifice because Samuel was a was a was a priest. He was a prophet, but he was a priest. So he was supposed to wait for Samuel to do that. You understand? But he said, you know what? Um, Saul decided to what? To do the offerings himself. So as Samuel said, had the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as, as in obeying the, the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fate of rams. And then verse 23 says, For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is a, as iniquity and idolatry, because you had what rejected the word of the Lord. He had also rejected thee from being king, but he was being rejected as a prophet. God just rejected him as a prophet. Okay, we're talking about the king, the, that king, uh, the king of Bethel was already rejected by God. Amen. So now the men of God who are sent by God not to do anything in Bethel, not to drink even their water because he brought a word of judgment in that in that country. He was supposed to just pass through. Don't stop anywhere else. Just pass through. Don't eat anything from there. Just pass through. That means you're not supposed to be invited in nobody's home. You just run and, and, and just get out of there. But he decided to rebel against God. He decided to be stubborn and do his own thing. He followed the old prophet who deceived him. That's a spirit of deception. You know, it is a spirit of deception. He was deceived. You know, uh, to me, he was a prophet in that land. God would have spoken to that old prophet concerning the king, what was going on in that country. But because he wasn't right, he had drifted away from God. That's why God used someone from out of the country to come and bring forth the word of judgment upon the nation. Because th that means that, that, that old prophet wasn't right at all. He wasn't right. You know, the word says he wasn't right. Something was wrong. When he had great miracles and he saw what God was doing, the spirit of envy and jealousy, you can see that. He wanted the young prophet to be deceived and become like him. Yeah. He wanted him to be like him because he wasn't God. That means God wasn't using that man for him to lie and say the, the angel came to him. How many have lied and said the angel came to him and spoke to them the word of God? Oh, I'm a prophet too. Oh, I'm a man of God too. They come like that. I hear from God too. I'm a man of God. Who said you're not? But the word is coming. It says, put your house in order. You know, because that word sh should have shaken everybody, even the old prophet to repentance. But he was stubborn and he stayed in that way, that, that way that he wanted to deceive the man of God. But that young man was deceived by a person who had a religious spirit and he, he disguised himself. You know, you, you look at what the word says. Okay, let's go to 
Matthew 7, 15. What does the Matthew 7, 15 talks about? Look at that. Look at Matthew seven fifteen. It says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raven wolves. Beware of the false prophet because that young man was a man of God and he was deceived. You rejected the king. He wanted to give you reward because you stood by the word of God. But now a manipulating, seducing, lying spirit came from the old prophet and deceived the young man who was sent by God and not even fearing you know, the old prophet had no fear of God at all. That this man, God has just done great miracles through them. And you decide, okay, you're going to deceive him? You're going to go to him and say, and lure him and seduce him and say, you are a man of God, that the angel of the Lord spoke to you? Hey, my God, what a shame. What a disgrace. What a disgrace. Because he wanted, he, he wanted to benefit himself that, oh, that young man, he refused the king. Oh, he came to my house. He, entered, he ate at my house. The man that was sent by God. It was from his all selfishness that he put... He's the life of a young man <laughs> in danger and he died. He died because of what? Because he didn't pay attention to, to see that that's a spirit of deception. Let me say this. God doesn't contradict his word. When he told that young man, do not eat, do not drink, do not, don't use the same direction you came in. Use the different direction. God knew why. But they had to look for that young man. They will look for you to deceive you. They will look for you to cause you to go astray. They will look for you so that they hinder whatever God wants to do through you. They want to, to suck the life out of you. The very fact that that young man ended up dying, even the, the lion that killed that young man didn't eat that young man. The donkey was standing right there. The carcass, the body, the, his, his carcass was, was laying down there and there was a lion sitting next to the body, but it never touched that body. Why is that? The spirit of deception. The wolves that come in, in, in <laughs> the wolves that come in sheep's clothing, that come and deceive people and come in to cause people to sin, to cause people to fall, because they've already been, been, been rejected by God, and they want to come in and make sure that they take many with them. Why are you deceived by these false prophets? These liars that going around seducing, manipulating people. The Lord said, beware of the false prophets that come in sheep's clothing. He says, beware of the false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravaging wolves. They are ravaging wolves. They've come to destroy you. Be warned says the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This young man, look at this. He was running well. My God, Lord Jesus. This young man was running well. This young man was running well. 
He left the place where God had sent him to give the word and everything went according to the command. But on his way, he was deceived. The spirit of deception, the manipulating, lying, seducing spirits. He was running well. But along the way, they came an old prophet. I don't know whether to call it a prophet. But the word said the old prophet who had drifted away from God. Galatians 5, 7. Let's open there. Before I open Galatians 5, 7, let's open, um, let's open 2 Corinthians 11. Am I making any sense at all? You can read Galatians 11, verse uh, 14. Look at here. It says, it says that, and no, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Amen. The devil comes as the angel of the light and he says his ministers, that means the devil has ministers. His ministers, they transform, his ministers transform also as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. And verse 16 says, I say again, let no man think me, think me a fool, if otherwise, yet as a fool, receive me, that I may boss myself a little. What am I saying right now? Beware, be warned in these end times. Because the devil comes in sheep's clothing. He has his own ministers that come to you as ministers of righteousness, that come to you as if they preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. When they've come to you to seduce you, to manipulate you, to deceive you, and, 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 and draw you away from God. It's so seductive, so manipulative. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's what the devil has come to do. He don't just go to anybody. He knows that those that he goes to, he knows that God is using those people and there's something about them. That he comes to draw them. This was a man of God that was sent by God to bring forth a very powerful word. But he was drifted away. He was manipulated and said, I'm a man of God too. That's what he said. But he was nothing but a wolf in sheep's clothing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Am I making any sense? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Look at Galatians. Let's go back to, let's go to Galatians uh, 5, 7. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Galatians 5, 7. What does the word say? He says, You did run well. 
who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth. That man was out. He was gone out of the country of Bethel. But they followed him. They will follow you. They will look for you. They will look for you and follow you. To deceive you. To make sure that they make sure that your life is destroyed and you don't go further than that. And you look at that because he wanted that young man to be like him. Sure enough, look at the, why am I saying that? Go back to there. Second Kings, I mean, uh, First Kings 13. Look at what he did. So deceptive, that lying, manipulating spirit. Mm, 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 mm. God have mercy. Look at what he did. So as he prophesied about the death of this young man, look at what happens here. In verse 24, and when he was gone, a lion met him by the way, and he slew him. And, he, and his carcass was cast in the way, and, and an ass stood by it. And the lion also stood by the carcass. And behold, verse 25, men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way and the lion standing by the carcass and they came and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. And when the prophet that brought him back from the what from the way heard thereof, he said, it is the man of God who was what disobedient. Did you hear that? Now he's speaking. It was the man of God who, was, who deceived him. That's the very man. <laughs> and then, and behold, a man passed and saw the carcass cast into the way and the lion standing by the, uh, by the carcass. And they came and behold, and, beho and, and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. And and when the prophet that brought him back from the and when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, It is the man of God who was disobedient unto the word of the Lord. Therefore the Lord had de delivered him unto the lion, which had torn him and slain him according to the word of the Lord which he spake unto him. And he, he, he spoke to his sons, saying, Saggle me, to, saggle me the, the ass, the, the, the ass, and they saggled him. And he went and found his carcass cast into the way, and the ass and the lion standing by the carcass. The lion had not eaten the carcass, nor torn the ass. And the, and the prophet took up the, uh, the carcass of the man of God and laid it upon the ass and brought it back. And the old prophet came to the city to mourn and to bury him. And he laid his carcass into, in his own grave. And they mourned over him saying, Alas, my brother. Wow. <laughs> wow. He said, Alas, my brother. Wow. Now he was one with him. Verse 31 says, And it came to pass after he had what buried him, that he spake to his sons, saying, Then he says, uh, sorry, And it came to pass after he had buried him, that he spake to his sons, saying, When I am dead, then bury me. In this, in this sepulchre wherein the man of God is buried, lay my bones beside his bones. See that? For, for the saying which he cried by the word of the Lord against the altar in Bethel and against all the houses of the high places which are in the cities of Samaria shall, so, shall surely come to pass. 
because he passed through. The word had already gone out. He spoke the word. You understand what I'm saying? But you look at this, the very thing that he wanted, that man, it happened. That false prophet deceiving the young man and because he wanted him to be like him. And he now called him brother. Wow. He called him brother. So what does Galatians say? Galatians say, he says that you did run well. Galatians 5, 7. He says you did run well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? The young man was hindered by a man of God. The young man was deceived by a man of God. He came, it, it, it says it was a man of God, it was, it was a prophet. But for God not to use that prophet, that means something was wrong with him. And for him to lie to that young man, that means something was wrong with that old prophet. Number one, God didn't use that old prophet, you know. He sent someone, a young man from another place who, who had a right standing with God, came all the way from Judah. And you know what? The young man was deceived by a man so-called a man of God, but he was not a man of God. He was a wolf in sheep's clothing. He wanted to make sure that that man, that young man was destroyed. Amen. So he says, you did run well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? You are running well right now. What is it that is a hindrance in your life that is hindering you to seek God? That is hindering you to do what God has called you to do? What is standing on your way? What have you heard in your ears and participated in? That is causing you to be in this way, you know, in, in the way that you are right now. The word is gone forth. That young man died prematurely because of the spirit of deception. Because he couldn't sense that, <coughs> excuse me, because he couldn't discern that that man was, had a lying spirit. That was a lying spirit. Because he came as an angel of the light, but he wasn't of God. Pay attention to this word. <clears throat> Pay attention to the word of God. What the word says. Take heed to the word of God. Because when the devil comes to you, he doesn't say, I'm the devil, I'm coming to you to deceive you. That's not how the devil comes. But he come as an angel of the light. He come as a prophet. He said, I'm a prophet. I'm a prophet also. We talked of the word of disobedience. He disobeyed God. It's the little foxes that swallow the vine. And it's the little leaven that leavens the whole lump. Amen. When God gives you a word, it's a command. Take heed and listen to what the words say. Amen. Don't be deceived and go astray. It might look so seducing, so manipulating, but you, you, the Lord has already given you the word. Rebuke that thing. Rebuke that thing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, bless God. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. Mandu suka taya manu siyasanena. Mandu suka sika toka sene mehana masiaya. 
Machine mezia korontusia sana mazia soba koshako. Oh, precious Jesus, hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for this word, my God. We thank you, Lord, for your word. That is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing asunder of joints and marrow and soul and spirit. It is the discerner of thoughts and the intents of the heart, my God, in Jesus' name. Oh, Father God, even today, Father, there are so many that are like that young man. There are so many that are like that young man, my God, in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we pray today in the name of Jesus that you open up their eyes, my God. We pray for the spirit of discernment, my God, that Lord God, as they see something comes, Lord, as you say it in, in 1 John chapter 4, that you try the spirit by the spirit. Father, indeed, my God, because something was wrong there, Father, and that man, the young man died prematurely. He was running well, but there was a spirit of deception that came forth as the angel of the light. I'm a prophet also, the, the devil said. But I pray today, Father, in the name of Jesus, that Lord, you have your way in our lives, that we will be found in that place, my God, that Lord, you protect and guide us, that you show us things before they come, my God, in Jesus' name, that Lord, that we will be found like that young man, my God, in the name of Jesus, that will be walking dead people, my God, in the name of Jesus, but we will be a people that are obedient to your command, obedient to your word. When you speak to us, we are ready, Lord, to obey, Father, and do exactly what you told us to do, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. We do not want to be the children of disobedience, my God, but we want to be your children that are obedient, Father God, that, Lord God, when we are warned, when we are told, my God, not to do things, Lord, we obey the word, that we won't be hearers only, but we will be the doers of the word in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Father God, I'm not only talking only of the prophets, my God, or, or of the pastors and all, but I'm talking to every child of God that they will pay attention, even the word of God that is given to us, my God, that let us tremble at the word as it comes forth. Let us tremble at the word as it comes forth, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you and we bless you for this word, that Lord, you protect us, O oh God, deliver us from evil in the name of Jesus, that will be children that are obedient and listen and pay attention to your word that father god we try every spirit by the spirit of god as first john chapter 4 my god verse 1 in the name of jesus father god we thank you and we bless you father that you, you touch each one of us this morning god and speak to our hearts my god we thank you for this word my god in jesus name and we bless you for this word that lord indeed it fell on fertile grounds, my God, in Jesus' mighty name, Lord God, we thank you and we bless you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. I know that there's so many that maybe the Lord has spoken to you concerning this word. You need to pay attention to the word of God. Don't run around when God has spoken to you to go and take a word somewhere. Don't sit down and eat with them. You take the word, speak the word of God and allow God to do his work through that word. In Jesus mighty name, you take the word and run. In Jesus name, hallelujah. Take the word and run. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. You don't look back, you go as the Lord leads you. Hallelujah. Because there are some of you who are given the word and you don't you didn't even say the word that God has given you because you've become one of them and you become so comfortable. God said today to you, I speak to you today in the name of Jesus, that you don't be comfortable in the place of where you are because your life is at stake. Your life is at stake today because you've chosen to obey and live with the carnal people instead of obeying the word of God that has been spoken to you, that you're supposed to give the word and not compromise the word of God, that because of your carnality, because of your greed, you've decided to join the devil and, 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 and eat this delicacy of the enemy. That's your downfall. That's your downfall. 
You might be walking. You might be doing whatever you're doing, but you spiritually you are dead. You are dead spiritually. You're not functioning well because the spirit of deception is is walking with you. You are walking in deception because you've disobeyed the word of God. God say today, pay attention to that word. You come correct with God. Because there's all as God, he says you repent of the of of of, of the things that, that you are doing right now, you need to repent. You need to come correct with God. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. You need to come correct with God. God is speaking his word. God is saying that's not right what you're doing. Don't sit with them. Don't be carnal. Be spiritual and walk in righteousness. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord have your way this morning in the name of Jesus. Thank you Father. Thank you for this word my God. Thank you for this word Lord. We thank you and we bless you this morning in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. We hope you enjoyed today's message and we never want to leave without giving you the opportunity and chance to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. It says in Romans 10:9, if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. It also says in verse 13 that whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And it also says in Acts 4:12, neither is there salvation given to any man under heaven except it talks about through the one which is Jesus Christ that you must be saved there's neither salvation in any other but by the one who is Jesus Christ and today i like to say a prayer with you if you have never made Jesus your lord and savior or you knew him and you like to rededicate your life to him or you're not even sure that you have known him We like to take this time an opportunity because the word says save means to do well and your life might not be going well right now. God wants to change that for you. It also means to be healed. And you might have things going on in your life, your body that needs to be healed. Jesus is the healer. He's the great physician. It means to even be delivered. You might be struggling with things in your life today. Well, Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith, and he's able to deliver you cuz he never changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's it says in Hebrews 13. And we just like to pray now for you because I believe that when you accept Jesus in your heart, it's not just a confession of something. It's a belief of God coming into your life and him transforming you from the inside out. So I'm going to take this opportunity right now to pray with you. And if you like to repeat the words that I'm saying, you could do so or you could pray as what comes out of your mouth just to give your life to the Lord. But let's pray right now. Father, I just ask you in the name of Jesus to save me, to transform me, to heal me and deliver me. I believe Lord Jesus you died for me and God raised you from the dead and now you sit in heaven and you took all my sins on the cross so I can be forgiven and made free. Lord, come into my heart. Be my savior. Be my Lord and I receive you now in Jesus name. And if you have said that prayer today, We would like to also hear from you and you can reach us at www.ruaintministries.com or you can even subscribe on YouTube and you can share that you received them or your testimonial. We'll love to hear from you. We much appreciate you joining us this day and I'm just going to say a prayer for you because we'll seal this deal cuz when you accepted him 
He's Lord of your life. Father, I thank you for each and every one that had the opportunity to receive you in their heart. I thank you for watching over them, protecting them, covering them by your blood in the name of Jesus. I thank you that they are free because whom you make free is free indeed. And I thank you, Lord, for doing it in Jesus' mighty name. We love you. We hope to see you soon. God bless you because Jesus is Lord.